Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy, with another deck review. This time the Ghost Tarot. And I don't know if I had seen this before, but I recently saw a review for it. This is October, so when I saw it in the end of September, people are revving up for Halloween. And although I have um, Lisa Hunt's um, Ghosts and Spirits Tarot, which I love, it's a little bit, I would say, weighed down by the fables. And weighed, by weighed down, I mean that I feel like I have to learn them all before I can fully use the deck. This, this doesn't come with that. Um, it's got ghostly images, and you can make of them what you will. I will um, read a little bit from the guidebook. Um, like maybe one or two so that you can see that it's uh, like, okay, four of pentacles. You can see that it just doesn't kind of do the images justice, which is very common. This being a low scarabeo deck, you know, it's just a little white book. Suit of pentacles. I'll read you the description. And then I will show you the picture. So number four, being overly protective of what is yours leads to solitude and true poverty, as in true like poverty of the soul. So to me, these images are kind of much more evocative than that description kind of warrants. So you've got his four pentacles set in the in the wall there. So it's for this deck, it's kind of an austere environment, and you can see that things seem to be decaying around him. We're stuck down here on the floor. Um, so it does kind of depict the Four of Pentacles, but you know what they say? Like the Eight of Wands, all it says is freedom is priceless and boundless. That's it. That's all it says. So they're kind of um, stuck. Um, tarot definitions for the cards, um, not bringing the ghostly spirit aspect of it into it. Now one thing I will say about this um, deck is that these windows, these windows make a difference. They, what you see in the windows varies. You'll see pentacles and pentacles and, and stuff like that. So that his windows are blank here, I think, um, speaks to his spiritual poverty as well. But let's go back and take a look at the deck. Because to me, this is a deck where the images are important. It's interesting to me that for the first time ever, I think I've gotten a deck where the deck bias is correct. Like the card bias is bowed in such a way that it should make shuffling easier instead of more difficult. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this was created in 2014. And it has, again, a slightly textured back. The backings are in a smooth face. And that was true of my um, Universal Goddess Tarot, which I think was originally published in 2013. So during that time, apparently they did this interesting thing with the card stock on the front and the back, with a coating on the front and the back being just a little bit different, which I really like. All right, so this is the backing, a bit elaborate, an eye and sort of floral stuff, a little Art Nouveau-y. Maybe that's Art Deco, I always get them mixed up. All right, so the images. Let's just do a walkthrough. I can keep the glare off. Cool. It's all in order, magician. I love that the fool has a rainbow. This is a very plain Jane sort of high priestess. It's clearly much more the abbess <laughs> or the, what do they call the head nun? I can't remember. Anyway. 
No, so they are very ghostly. You can hardly see this. The Empress she's got a strange sort of hat. I'm not sure why I think I need to hold on to the whole deck like that. Forget it. And get the glare off there. So you can see the backing of the chair through the figure. Creates an interesting effect. Lovers. So, you know, if you're asking a question like who or what is haunting you, you know, you should get some really interesting information, I guess I would is how I would put it. But I would like a a more interesting guide. So I would probably sit with these a little bit. I think they're usable right off the bat because they stick pretty much to the right or weight type of uh, you know take on things whatever you want to say uh, this I like that it looks like it's a funeral carriage that he's um, moving along there this I don't like so much because the the lion appears to be the ghost, whereas I would say that both the woman and the lion are spirits because that little girl is clearly from a completely different time. And I think that little girl appears again in the Six of Cups. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same little girl or not. Um, I think this Wheel of Fortune is really fun. It's like it's it's not human spirits, but it's some other kind of spirits turning the wheel. I'm not sure what's behind the hand man. I think it might be bats. Might be bats flying around. Good old death looking especially spooky. Um, and when I saw this, part of what attracted me to it is that so much of it is at night or um, dusk or dawn. You see that the hierophant has a lot of light coming in through the window, which I feel is probably intentional and appropriate. Um, so yeah, this temperance is a little on what I would call the boobish side. She's got a very, her upper garment is very thin and sheer. The devil. This card just says to me, you know, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> you might show up. Um, you have a, a spirit way down there near the door, which I had to look at these a couple times before I saw them. But this is kind of like the Wheel of Fortune where you've got other sorts of spirits involved there. The star has some weird eyes. Her eyes are stars, making her very otherworldly. And she seems to be pouring things at a ruin, so I guess, which is appropriate. She comes after the tower, so. Um, I'm not 100% sure what to think of this as the moon card. Um, to me, it seems to lean on the wild side, the lunacy sort of side of the moon, maybe more so than the fears, and you kind of miss the, in the right or way, of course, your sort of obsessive use of opposites. So you, you miss the tame dog and the wild, um, the wild wolf. 
Let's see, here's one late evening with two, looks like two ghost children sort of in the wings, hiding from the sun there. This is interesting too as judgment because to me, this would almost be like the spirit wanting to reclaim the body, however inappropriate that might be. <laughs> It's not going to work very well. <laughs> An interesting world, which actually seems sort of um, like entrapment. But of course, if you think of a crystal ball, it's looking into another world as well. We've entered cups now. I find these ladies very interesting. They're kind of spiky here. You know, and they're not the traditional celebrants. They're something else. It's like the ghosts or the other world is offering you something in that, and then certainly in this. Here he is saying farewell to a spirit. I think she's heading off. Um, I find this really curious. So here's, I don't know if it's the same little girl, but again, a little girl and a little boy kind of offering her flowers across the border there. <laughs> And the border is curious, you know, it's the whole, he's dressed from another time. So there's, there's not only ghosts and spirits, there's kind of past life stuff going on here, you know, and there's the one, the stone house in the, looks like an adobe, maybe house. Very interesting. Is it the same girl? No, I'm curious. Who was that girl? No, nope. the other girl was a little blonde. This one's a little head, redhead. I thought they could have had more fun with this than they did the Seven of Cups. It gets the point across. <clears throat> I really like this. There's the Eight of Cups, and there's a, a dark castle there in the background that my webcam isn't really going to pick up, but it's back there. This is interesting for the Nine of Cups. So does he see her or doesn't he see her? It looks like he's looking past her or through her. Maybe he only knows she's sitting there because of the flowers. I don't know. It's... It's kind of weird. And then, I don't know if, yeah, the webcam looks like we'll pick it up. It is picking it up. So I don't know if this is death leading a happy parade or if these spirits are chasing him away. I don't know. This is on the box, I believe. Yes. It's here. Yes, sir. In a very evocative image, this would be the page. Now let me look at that, because I think that this person, um, whoever did the guidebook, doesn't even say in the front. I don't know. But I think, yeah, that they gave... They gave these cards, the court cards, sort of the um, Myers-Briggs type, you know, they're giving them types, they're assigning types to them. You know, it doesn't speak to me that way because this is supposed to be the spirit of the dreamer as a court card. This is the spirit of the dreamer. And I don't know, this is the spirit of the seducer. 
the Knight of Cups, the spirit of the seducer. The Queen is the spirit of the mystic. And much like other court cards, it doesn't speak to me that particularly. Um, uh, do I believe that the Queen of Cups could be called in just, you know, in general, the spirit of the mystic? Yes, I do. But she doesn't look like a mystic to me, even though she's a spirit. She doesn't look like a mystic to me. Um, and the King of Cups, the spirit of the healer. And again, the texture there is the back, is the back of his chair. So um, when we get to the pentacles, I'll read you this, how, how the how the courts are assigned. So here we have pentacle. And I kind of wish it wasn't such a earthy pentacle. You know, you've got the ghostly hand and the, the very solid pentacle. I would almost have preferred if it had been sort of a ghostly pentacle. Um, I guess this must be the poltergeist card. <laughs> yeah, nothing swinging around there. This is curious. So, and again, this might be kind of another poltergeist card if you don't know why suddenly chunks of the masonry are popping off. So he is working. And I don't know if he's, what is it, brownies that are supposed to be the helpers around the house. So I don't know if he's helping or hurting that spirit there. And what is she doing? She's just pouring water down here. So, I don't know. They don't seem like they're coordinating like you would normally see with the Three of Pentacles. Here's the four we looked at earlier. The five. This bunch of spirits sort of left out, I guess. There's a dark... Yeah, there it is dark building out there. I mean, I suppose that's what all ghosts in most cultures are, is that spirits that didn't manage to travel to the other side for whatever reason. Uh, it's not supposed to be happy to be a ghost, so they say. So that's, what is that, the six? And it's interesting because he's an old man He's an old man there at the grave, and he is so remembering when they were young. Um, I love this as a seven of pentacles. You know, it's like, where is it leading? Which is exactly the kind of question that you would ask if you're looking at your results and you're wondering what's going to come of it. Where is it leading? I love, it. I love the ghostly aspect of it. Um... This I don't quite get, so if anybody gets this. So here's this guy. And he looks relatively modern, not super, you know, with those glasses, reading this book. And she's down there actually kind of chipping away. I don't know if she's supposed to be carving that stone or what, but she's a bride, a young bride. She's clearly younger than he is. So I don't know if this is father-daughter um you know why she's shown here as a bride if she's a daughter this is the eight of pentacles so i can see that she's working slowly on something to honor this person i don't know it's weird um nine of pentacles you got not just one bird but a bunch of birds and to me, this almost looks too much like a queen instead of the nine of pentacles. It's just sort of different. It is, you know, everything has a green cast or a green hue to it. So I suppose that kind of brings in the whole uh, garden aspect. So I don't know if the thought here is that a spirit needs to have some sort of solid dwelling associated with it, with the exception of the five of pentacles. They tend to be uh, latched onto 
uh, structure of some kind. Even in the next card, these spirits are supposed to have to do with the tower in the background. So here you have these spirits kind of leaving, and there's a child. So this is the Ten of Pentacles. So you have the different ages leading these two people towards the tower. Let me read that because that was a weird... Where is it? I haven't done the lines. Suit of Pentacles, the Ten. A wedding in the submerged chapel, which is that chapel in the background, only brings pain. Life is for the living, but they must also live live it in the darkest of moments. A wedding, a wedding in the submerged chapel only brings pain. So maybe these spirits are trying to warn them and keep them away from it. Maybe they're going, no, don't go there. That's not what you want. Very, so very cryptic in the guidebook. It's like, what? All right. Page. A pretty beefy looking page ghost. Night. Oh, I was going to tell you the. So the page is Spirit of the Apprentice. This is supposed to be Spirit of the Apprentice. This is supposed to be Spirit of the Protector. Defender. Defender. Um, this is Spirit of the Mother. And spirit of the father. All right, on to the wands. Here, at least, the wand looks magical. And it's interesting the hand is coming out of the fire. Because we don't see that. And they could have done that with the pentacles, had a hand coming out of the earth. It would have been interesting. And they could have done that with, you yeah, know, you could have had Lady of the Lake kind of hand coming out with the cup, with the Ace of Cups also. But, but they didn't. They did it with the fire, um, the two. Somehow these ghosts, maybe because of all the bright stuff around them, look actually more substantial. Gotta love this. Look at that galleon. Oh my gosh. So yeah, gotta love that as a three, three of wands. Um, four, five again, kind of weird. No, I just don't know. What was that? I looked at it. Five, instinct leads us to repeat our own errors and make choices without full knowledge. I don't know. Um, the seven is more traditional. Excuse me, that's the six. It looks like the seven, it's the six, but you've got the ones down here. And this is slightly different, but still reminiscent of the seven. But he's not very much on higher ground. It looks like he's about to be completely overwhelmed by weird spirits. Love the eight. I love having the swifts or swallows there. Yep, that's the eight of wands. The nine of wands. Kind of reminds me of Shakespeare's Hamlet. The ghost that walked the ramparts. Um, this is, I don't know what quite what to think of this. I mean, it's it's kind of traditional. He's got the wands on his shoulder. Spirit of the workaholic. All right, so here we are. The page is the spirit of the inventor, and it's like he's not inventing anything. He looks, he looks like he's just trying to impress everybody by being bold. And 
spirit of the traveler. To some extent, it's interesting that the horse is looking like it's wanting to graze, even though it's a ghost horse. Spirit of the traveler. We're calling spirit of the muse. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you could call her spirit of the creator if you wanted to. Um, I don't know. To me, the idea of the muse is somebody who's there and triggers you to have um, somehow triggers you. In other words, it's all in you. It's really not in the muse, you know, to to be creative. Like, you know, when they talk about muses throughout history, someone has a muse. It's like that person really kind of spurs on their creative juices for some reason. Now that isn't the tradition, you know, it isn't the Greek muse thing. But when you're calling something a muse, it's kind of, you know, it's very different from the inventor um, and all of these other things that are active agents. A muse is not the active agent. So yeah, you can call her the spirit of the of the creator. Don't call her the spirit of the muse, for God's sake. All right, there's my rant. Spirit of the leader. On to the swords. The ace. The two. Interesting introduction of water here. I don't know if, again, she's supposed to be the Lady of the Lake, offering you two swords instead of one, and you get to decide which one. This is a very curious, um, is it this, the three? Maybe she's brokenhearted and he's offering her a little shelter, even though she's a ghost. This is quite amusing. Okay, so the Four of Swords, you see the eyeballs? There's these little eyeballs underneath. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that is very amusing for the Four of Swords. Five of Swords. And I could see this as somebody whose intellect kind of excludes the idea of ghosts. I can be that way. Um, or, I don't know that I exclude the idea so much as, you know, I'd rather not, <laughs> um, I'd rather not get too close to that. Here is, you know, the typical um, six with the ghostly boatman. So, um, Led by a ghost, just adrift, kind of. Love, kind of love all the moons in these two. Look at that wonderful moon up there. So it's a very moony deck. Here is a spirit spiriting away some swords. Or the seven, very appropriate. This I don't quite get the changes they made here. This is the eight of swords. So she's. Does she have a blindfold on? Can you see? Well, slight. Her hands are tied. She's standing on the edge of something. But she has, it's like she has spirit wings. She is not a spirit herself. So, again, I would have to spend some time with that and say, what, what are they implying here? I don't know. Yep. Ghostly terrors. This is very interesting as a, um, what is this? Is this the 10? Yep, yeah, it's the 10. So I don't know if it's his spirit. It looks like it is looking at his body and maybe having to become reconciled with the fact that it is the end. Um, so what is this? Wait a second. 
Yes, yeah, swords. This is the spirit of the researcher. They could have like put a library back there, a bunch of books or something. But no. Spirit of the researcher, spirit of the warrior. Appropriate. From that for that card in general. Um, spirit of the critic. That makes sense for the Queen of Swords. It's interesting that, you know, usually she has a different posture than this. And here the king and the queen have the same posture, essentially. And the king is the spirit of the teacher. And that's it. So there we go. I didn't think that was going to be so long. It's just a walkthrough, pretty much. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I'm glad I got it. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use it. It probably will only be a um, a Halloween -y sort of a deck. Um, I think there's usually there's some kind of tarot tag that goes around at this time of year that, um, and I think that the 365 tarot spreads has some. Um, spreads that are kind of like who is with you right now what spirit is with you what you know that kind of thing and so this would be a perfect deck i think for that um i think more so even than the ghosts and spirits by lisa hunt because again it kind of gives almost too much information that's almost more I don't know if you'd say like a guiding spirit or something that plagues you or something like this. This kind of gives bare bones where, you know, if you pulled a card and you said, let me just do it. Let me shuffle them for one thing. Let me shuffle them and see how it goes. Um, is that going to work out right? Yes. Yes, and so that nice bias that is appropriate for shuffling. So if I just do that, if I just pick one and I say what spirit is um, with me or calling to me now or guarding me or whatever, I have the spirit of the traveler. So I can take that as a general spirit or I can think in terms of, is this somebody I know from the past whose ghost is with me? Um, who somehow from the other side is with me in spirit? Who would have been the traveler? Probably would have been my grandfather on my mother's side. I'm not sure that I know anybody else who was kind of a wanderer. He supposedly had wanderlust. Not really during the time that he was my grandfather, but supposedly when he was younger. Um, then there are people who I think wanted to travel, but didn't have the means to travel. So, you know, there's that kind of connection with or reminder of people who have passed. So. So it could be used for that kind of at any time when you either feel that you're being guided or feel that there's some strange energy around you. Or I suppose you could pull from this deck if you are wanting to call on someone and you can just say, who, who would be good to help me with X problem? You know, somebody that you might communicate with from the other side. And, you know, I say these things, but I'm not somebody totally sold on that idea. Um, but I could see that that's a possibility with this deck for those who would want to use it that way. I think it would be very good for that. Um, for me, it will probably um, be more of a Halloween deck and the occasional dip into what you call it, the occult, maybe? 
otherworldly sorts of things. Because I know that many people associate that with tarot anyway, but I don't necessarily. <laughs> so I have to go out of my way. I have to go out of my way to actually get a special deck that, to me, would kind of take me in that direction. Regular Rider Waite Smith now strikes me as quite practical, not terribly esoteric or terribly um, occult. Um, all right, so my dogs are moaning and groaning now. They're starting to moan and groan. This tells me that we are nearing, like, might be 30 minutes for me to take care of them, feed them. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks for hanging out and uh, learning about the ghost tarot. I would recommend it if you're into that sort of thing. I really like it. Take care. Bye-bye.